Hi guys, I'm Zoe from Zoe's Fancy Cakes and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a Gandalf cake. I'm going to build on a little cake frame. So this is one that I made with wood. Now I will have to kind of cover everything rather than having the cake touch it. And you can build your own. They're fairly easy to make but you do need like a drill or power tool to create the holes. Now I'm going to just take this bottom bit off just because I want to add a little cake card on here so that my cake will go onto a card. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, I'm going to move that washer up a tiny bit. I'm going to add that card on. Then my big washer just to stop it moving around. And then let's put it into the board. And let's put the washer back on. Now, if you don't want to make one of these guys, um, you could try it without, but I think it's, the cake's going to be too tall. It will topple without some internal structure. I do have spare of these that I do sell on the website and I'll put links below the video. But you would just need to get yourself like a little cake card to put on there. So it's about the size of the cake. I aimed for the middle with the hole um, on this cake card. It's slightly off center, but it should be fine for this. So what we're gonna do now is I've got like a hollow dowel that will cover the metal rod. So that should sort of protect that or stop our cake coming into contact with that. And I just need to sort out the nut at the bottom. It's a little bit taller than the metal rod underneath. And I'll cut this down to size in a minute too. So I'm just gonna squash that on there nice and tight. I think you can buy like food, food safe aluminium tape as well that you could put on if you wanted to. I've just used a cookie cutter to cut these out guys. And these are about just over three inches across for each one. So for the buttercream, I'm actually gonna add some Calibur dark chocolate. So all I've done is just melt a bit of chocolate. I think I melted about 250 to 300 grams of dark chocolate. And I've already made some buttercream. So just vanilla buttercream. And I'm simply gonna pour in the melted dark chocolate and I'm just gonna mix it in. So I'm gonna try and slot these onto here. Now, if you want, you can make the holes in the cakes first. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of buttercream under here, actually. Don't worry if it squeezes out everywhere, it's fine. My cake's crumbling. I think what I'll do is I'll put different things between each layers. So I'm just gonna put some chocolate chips on top of my buttercream on this first layer. Let's put our next cake on. I'm gonna add a bit of Nutella actually onto this next layer and also a bit of buttercream as well. And I'm just gonna keep going with this, alternating between like buttercream and Nutella and chocolate chips in there. So I've got about six of my cakes stacked up. I'll put a little bit of buttercream on the edge and I'm putting it in the fridge so it has a chance to firm up. And while it's firming up, we're gonna work on the face. Now I've got a polystyrene ball and the polystyrene ball is about four centimeters in diameter. And I'm using some of the Saracino modeling paste. And we're just pressing like an oval of it onto the front of the polystyrene. I've also got a little kebab skewer stuck in the bottom of that polystyrene. And what I'm going to do is sculpt a little face for my wizard. So pushing in at the eye sockets and then we'll pinch a bit of a nose in place. So I'm just going to use a balling tool to create two oval holes for the eyes. And then I'm using this little hook tool. So this is one of the Carlos Lachetti hook tools. It just makes a good shape for an eye bag. And let's roll two little ovals of white paste and we'll stick them in those eye holes. We've got a little bit of gray paste for the eyebrows. So I'm gonna cut two sort of little triangle-ish shapes, long thin triangles. You want the chunky end sort of in the middle of the side of the face and the thinner bit of the eyebrow coming out towards the outer edge. And let's put some little lines in for the hair marks. Or lines for the hair. Let's put some little lines for the hair in. You can cut into it as well if you want. Let's put some tiny little black pieces of paste in each eye for the pupils. I'm going to put half a little circle or semicircle at the bottom of each eye. And that's just going to be in the same colour that we've used for the skin for the rest of his face. I'm just gonna add some pink edible powder to the cheeks. Now I'm still using edible powder, but we're not gonna be eating this head because it's got a polystyrene ball in the middle. And that's just to lighten the weight on this one, guys. Just putting a little bit of a darker shade under the eye bags. 
And let's go back to our cake, which has had a bit of time in the fridge. And I'm now just going to make it a little bit taller. So because I haven't put any internal dowling in, I didn't want to go too tall at first because it will squash. So that's why it's had some time in the fridge to firm up. You might find that you want to put dowling in yours. See how you get on with if you feel like it's squashing down or not under its own weight. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to carve a very basic shape. So we're going to make it a little bit narrower at the top than it is at the bottom. So we're not doing anything too fancy with this. But then all my little offcuts, which are only really thin shavings of offcuts, but these are going to go on the bottom. So I'm going to stick these at the bottom just to widen the very base of the cake. Now, don't worry if you don't get it perfectly smooth because he's wearing a big cloak. So a lot of it is going to be covered up on this one. So you don't have to spend a long time making it really nice and neat. We're going to cover the whole thing in our chocolate buttercream. And I'm just using a flexible scraper just to scrape around it now. And this will smooth it off a little bit for us. Now I'm going to use some aluminium wire. It's a fairly soft one, so it's easily bendable. And I'm going to use this for his little staff. Is it a staff? Is that what it's called? So I'm bending it to the shape that I want it to be. The little piece of paste that I put part way up is so that I've got a rough idea of where I think his hand is going to sit when I put it all together. I'm just going to thicken it up a little bit at the bottom by twisting, can you see, just a second piece on there. I'm actually using modelling chocolate on mine, so I've got some brown modelling chocolate. And guys, I'll put links below the video to everything that I do use in this video. And I've tried not to make it neat. I've tried to just kind of pull off a chunk, press it around the stick, and then sort of pull it around, twisting it as it goes up the stick. Because I want it to look like wood, like a kind of tree trunky kind of look that's not too neat and tidy and I'm just going to do this all the way up but I want it to get a little bit thinner as we're coming further up it was a little bit trickier going around the twisty bits and then you can also add more lines to it if you want just make sure your wire doesn't stick out anywhere and then using the same modeling chocolate I'm going to make him a little pipe so we've got like a long thin carrot shape I'm, I'm going to add a little bit of a wire into that as well so this is a fairly thin wire. It's just a florist wire. It's about gauge 24, this one I think that I used. So we're leaving it thicker at the end. It's kind of curved up a bit. Let's just put the balling tool in the end there. And the wire is just to give it a little bit of extra strength, but also when I push it into his mouth, the wire can be pushed into the mouth later. So let's just cut all that extra off because we don't need quite as much as that. And this needs a bit of time to be firming up so that will just go back to the side. And what we're doing now is we're going to just make some fondant for the cloak. Now, I've put a bit of a few different colours in this one. So I started with some white fondant. Then I added a little bit of dark blue and also a little bit of black. I actually also put in a little bit of green. And I used the Massa Ticino paste for this one. And I'm just going to cut out a couple of small sort of little slithers. So that when I put his cloak on, the little creases of the fabric will hopefully push into these lines a little bit. So I'm going to do it in a few different pieces and I'm just creating two little small like sausage bits that are going to go around sort of the tops of where his shoes will poke out from. So I'll just put them on first and then I've rolled this fairly thin because I don't want loads of chunky fondant on this one if I can help it. Also the thinner it is, the easier it is for me to kind of make it a bit more fabric like and it's going to go easily into those little indentations that we cut in earlier. And I only really need it to cover the front half just reattaching those little feet bit, those little bits where the feet are going. I'm just going to cut it off around the bottom edge. And you can put extra creases in with the end of your Dresden tool. So this is going to be the front, the bit that we've covered now. So can you see it's already starting to take shape a little bit? It will look completely different when we're finished. And I've decided at this point that actually it would have been better if I had iced my cake drum first on my wooden board. So I'm just using some green. This is the Massa green that I'm using as well. So it was quite a dark green. I'm just going to try and lift the bottom of his cloak up a little bit so it sits on top of the grass. So if I'd have done this first, it would have just made my life a little bit easier. And I didn't roll enough to go all the way around. So let's just cut any extra off from around the edge of the board. And then we'll just piece in that missing bit. Let's use a bit of the off cut and put that over that missing bit there. And I'm just using the rolling pin to just roll that into the piece underneath. I'm going to cut down the plastic dowel so it's about level with the top of my cake. And then I'm going to add a washer onto there so that the head, when I put the head on, this supports it a little bit. 
the wash is not too wide on this one as well and I'm also going to use quite a long piece of aluminium armature and we're going to push this around here this is going to be the arm so I'm going to try and get an equal length each side and don't worry if it's too long at this point it's better for it to be too long than too short let's screw the knot on to hold that in place so this is now our sort of shoulder height so I'm just going to check that this reaches nicely to the staff, which it does. So I'm going to bend it around the end. I've also bent where I want his elbow to go. And I'm just going to put a little dip in the fondant on the base, a bit of water or edible glue, and we're going to push that into there just so it, it holds it in place a little bit. Now I'm going to use some of my cloak colour to just block in that little bit at the back of what will be sort of the back of the shoulders. And up here. Now don't worry about being terribly neat with this bit because his beard and cloak are gonna completely cover this. So now I'm gonna add the head at this stage and I know the head isn't finished but we'll add to the head afterwards. Now the stick has to insert just in front of that washer because it won't go through the metal washer. So for the hands I'm gonna roll two little sausage shapes in the pale skin color and let's cut a little line to the side for the thumb, shortening it a little bit and then let's cut in some fingers. Just round them off a little bit at the ends. Let's bend them at the knuckles. And this one's gonna go around here. So holding onto the staff. Then this next one, we're gonna put it so it cups around his pipe. But I think I'm gonna just hang on for a little bit before we add that one. So I'm just gonna press in a little line where we're gonna have his belt. I think I went a bit low, so let's try and make it a bit higher up if we can. And let's use some brown modeling chocolate. Let's cut a little strip. And we're just gonna put some texture in. So we're just gonna put some crisscross lines so that it doesn't look quite as flat. And I'm just pressing in a little bit of the edges as well. And let's push that on there. Now it doesn't matter if it doesn't go all the way around guys because the cloak is gonna be covering everything at the back. So if you want to go all the way around, you can do, but I don't need to, so I'm not doing. Add in a couple of little bits just there. Okay, so I'm gonna take some more of his cloak color and um, we're gonna place it around that wire. Again, I'm not worried about getting it really neat because this isn't sort of the outer layer. He's, he's gonna have big sleeves going over this, so they're just very rough. And I'm gonna go with a slightly lighter color on the arm. So I've just added a bit of white to that, to the cloak color for this. And then we're gonna just put a little piece so it just comes over his hands slightly, sort of up to his knuckles. Let's do the same on the other arm, which I have bent upwards. And just at this stage, this is where I want to have a look and see if, you know, does he need any extra adding to the shoulders? Does he need bulking out anywhere up there? So all this top section is the bit that's not going to have the cake in, so we're not going to be eating all this top bit. And we're going to roll some thin pieces, nice and thin, and we're going to fold them. They want to be long enough that they go from the bottom of the cake to the top. Kind of concertina in them a little bit. Let's add a bit of water, or you can use edible glue to the back of them. Piping gel will also work okay for sticking these to your cake. And we're just gonna stick this onto the front of him. We're just gonna take it up and over sort of the shoulder. I feel like he looks like a monk at this stage, like Friar Tuck or someone. Let's do the same on the other side. Just make sure you press it on firmly, it's not gonna drop off. I've rolled an oval and I've cut it in half for the shoes. And we're just gonna stick those on for the very bottom. And let's add this other hand now. So let's push it onto the wire. Don't worry if it comes out of the palm a little bit because his pipe is gonna stick onto that so we're not gonna see the wire. Just gonna build a bit more of the sleeve color up around that and then some of the paler color. Just a nice little flat piece. It's gonna wrap around the forearm and the back of the hand. Most of it is gonna be covered up on that bit guys as well. Okay, so we're gonna roll again nice and thin you want it as thin as you can go really with these guys. Let's cut kind of a circle slash oval. And I'm gonna try and fold it. So we've put some creases in and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold it over his arm. Let's do the same on the other one. Probably don't need to put as many folds in it on this one because his arm's not bent. His arm is a bit straighter. We're just gonna drape that over there like that, bringing it up onto his shoulder. I'm just putting a bit of water between the front and the back of it so it kind of sticks together a little bit. Now for the back of his cloak, 
again, we've just got another big piece, needs to be long enough to go from bottom to top of the cake. Let's put some little folds in it. Now you can cut it neatly at the edges if you want. I've just left it as it was rolled out because I thought it looked okay for this. And then let's place it on here. We're just gonna pull it round so it comes to the sides of him. Because you don't want to see any cake sort of peeping out from the sides. And then we're going to have another piece that goes around sort of the shoulders and this back bit here. So we're going to create him a little hood. Again, it's just a piece that's folded and just draped around the back of the neck. For his hair, we've got a teardrop that's been folded. We're going to put a few lines in and then sort of wave it side to side. This is just going to go onto the back of his head. Don't worry about bringing it all the way to the very top of his head because his hat's going to cover that. Let's go for a couple of smaller pieces now. We'll try and do the same where we're waving the bottom of it slightly. And let's just put this on the side of his head there, pulling it round towards the back. So it's starting to look a bit different now that these are going on. Do the same on both sides. And if you've got any gaps, add some smaller pieces in there just to fill it in. And then let's cut a piece with kind of some triangles out. And this is gonna go from the side to where his ear would be just down the side here and we'll do the same on the other side of his face as well so for the main longest piece of his beard i'm going to roll a piece of white try and get a bit of a point at the end you could put little sort of cuts in the side if you want it to look more like individual pieces we'll wave it a bit sort of from side to side like we did with the hair so i'm actually not sticking it on his face this first piece because i want his beard to be really long so it looks weird but we are going to add to this and we're going to create another piece i'm going a bit shorter but a bit wider Put some little cuts in there and let's sort of twist the ends. You can curl some outwards if you want. This one's going to go a little bit higher up. So it's gone a little bit higher this one so it just fits on the bottom of his face. And then I forgot to add that other side piece in so let's get that in now. And then another teardrop, a bit smaller this time and this is just going to go on in that middle bit there, so on his chin. And then we're going to take a tiny piece of paste for his bottom lip. And then we're going to add some pieces for his moustache. So we're going long and thin for this moustache. And the bottom lip should just stick out from sort of under the moustache. Then you can push the pipe. So it just looks like it's coming out from that lip. And then let's stick that onto his hand. Now it would have been really nice to add some smoke or something coming out of the pipe, but... I went for the easy option and just left it without anything. Okay, so a nose. So we're going to take like a, a bit of a chunky teardrop. And we're just going to put a little line each side for sort of the bottom of the nose. And we're going to press that in. So it overlaps onto the moustache and just kind of fits between the eyes, just below the eyebrow. Give it a good press on in place. And you can shape it more if you want once it's in place. Excuse the mess in the background, guys. I am currently having uh, work done on my house and garden. <laughs> And then let's just add a bit of pink edible dust to the nose and lip. So I've got more of that cloak colour. This time I've added a bit of CMC. Or you can use Tylos just to firm it up a little bit because it's fondant we've been working with. And um, we're cutting a circle for his hat and I want it to be a little bit firmer. Otherwise it's just going to flop over his face. Just thinning the edges. Apologies guys that I did manage to get things a little bit out of focus in this video. So I'm adding the disc of paste to his head, flop it over a little bit and then we're going to do a cone in the same colour paste and that's just going to sit on top of the disc. We're going to fold it over halfway, about halfway up that cone and we can put a, little, a couple of little crease lines in there. So this one's for my baby brother whose 30th birthday is today. So we're going to take that to his party later on. So if, for anybody that doesn't know, my brother's one of the guys that helps edit the videos for YouTube and he's a big Lord of the Rings fan. And I thought this idea would be fairly quick to do. And actually, I surprised myself. This was much quicker than I thought it was going to be. So there he is, all finished. Thanks ever so much for watching the video, guys. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more videos like this one. See you next time.